Alright gang, today is time for my apocalypse, maximum apocalypse. Alright, to set up maximum apocalypse, first thing we're going to do is take our handy dandy uh, mission log book here, and we are going to decide which mission we want to do in the said log. If this is your first game, I suggest you start at the beginning. I, however, have been playing this for a while, so I'm going to start with mission 11, which is protect the base. Which is just a bang bang shoot up. It's personal with this. All right, so we will need the robot monster deck for this particular mission. And if we look at the robot monster decks, you can see on the bottom right, they all have letters that tell you which deck they are for. All right. Each monster deck has a deck of monster cards, which has various monsters in them, along with these monster bo boss cards, all right? There's two of them. They say boss on the left side of the card on the top there. All right, so like I said, we'll be fighting the robots today. We're going to take the robot deck along with the two robot monster cards. We're just going to put them aside for now. Any unused monster decks will be returned to the box. They will not be used for the game. I should make note while I'm doing this that the zombies are the easiest monsters to fight, followed by the mutants, then the aliens, and the hardest in this uh, box here is the robots. So, like I said, I'm going to put the rest of these away. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to take all the tokens and the dice which come in this handy dandy container and we're going to put them off to the side of the uh, play area for now. We're going to need space in the middle of the table for a board which we will set up momentarily. Alright, next we are going to shuffle the scavenge decks. As you can see, it comes in another handy dandy container. We'll get back to that in a second. Alright, but there's three different scavenge decks. We have the red ones which represent fuel green ones which represents food and the blue ones which represents gear and ammo if we look on the back they all have this uh, magnifying glass symbol on them and if we look on the front of them on the top uh, right corner here we can see there are different symbols representing the groups that they belong to red green or blue some of the blue scavenge cards have these bullet symbols where the uh, you know, the magnifying glass symbol normally is. It just it's the same as any other gear card that belongs in the blue deck. Alright, so we're gonna shuffle each of these sets individually and then we're gonna put them off to the side of the board for a minute. And if we see here, they gave you a board which tells you where to place each of the individual cards. So we'll do that. This will probably be off camera, placing each stick in the appropriate spot now if you are playing maximum apocalypse for the first time you will go to the campaign log other mission setup and look to see what tiles you will be adding to um, your map pool to create a map if it is not your first time we have this handy dandy container here which holds the scavenge cards and the tiles from a previous game so you don't have to go fishing through all that you would simply pull these out and once again go through the mission setup and see you if you have to add or remove any tiles in order to play the mission that you are playing all right so now if we look at the mission setup here it says remove tile six which is the main which i will do now and i will keep the military base uh, out of the pile that I'm going to shuffle with the rest of the tiles so I can access this easily. This is going to be the starting tile. All right, so now when we're making a map, there's a couple of rules we got to follow by, not many, and this will uh, dictate the difficulty of the game if you choose so. This is one of the ways to uh, make the game more difficult or easy. One of the ways is by making the map, another one is the different characters you choose, the combination or the character in general, depending on the the situation of the uh, mission that you're doing. Uh, third way is using allies, etc. But back to the maps. First rule of map making is, like I said, depending on how you do it, it'll make it easier or more difficult. If you're going to make it like a straight box, it'll be easy. If there are any holes, it'll make it a little more challenging. Okay, if you bottleneck certain paths or make it difficult to go around it, stuff like that. All right, so that's the difficulty end of it. The actual rules are we cannot have any what I call booger tiles, right? Meaning you can't have one hanging out in the middle of nowhere like that, like in Carcassonne or any other game. They have to be connected to other tiles on at least one side. And that's basically it. No boogers. They have to be connected to other tiles on at least one side. Depending on how many holes in the map you make or how few you have will determine how hard or difficult the game is okay now like i said this uh, scenario calls for us to remove the van but normally the van is the starting space for the player's pieces which we'll get back to in a second being that this scenario calls for the military base to be the starting uh, 
spot, we will place that face up so everybody can see it and build a map around it however we choose to. I'm going to do it this way just because it's easier for the camera. All right, next players are going to choose a character to use. Again, this is part of the difficulty of the game. You can choose characters that will mix and match and complement each other. Some are more uh, for attack, some are more for defense, some are more for support. All right, so once you do, you've chose the character you want to, you want to take all of the pieces for said character, which includes their life counter, a mini, if that character has one, we'll get back to that in a second, the standees of the said character, along with the character deck and the character cards themselves. All right, so for this game, we are going to be playing with the hunter, which has the hunter name on it, along with the symbol here, and a picture of one of the character cards for the hunter. We're going to take the life counter for the hunter, the hunter deck, the hunter standee in this case. I could use the minis, but the standees uh, hold up better on camera, so I'm just going to use them. And then we're going to choose which of the character cards we're going to use in the game. All right, now if we look here up top, we can see their health. Below that, we can see their stealth and then their abilities down here. Okay, for this game, we were going to take the female hunter who has this recon. All right, so we're going to take that card along with her standee, her deck, and her life counter. We're going to return the other character card back to the box. It will not be used. We're going to do the same for the firefighter. Take note, if you were playing as the veteran, okay, neither veteran is on the picture of the deck. It's the dog, but it says veteran underneath it. And you will choose a combination of one human and one dog. Okay, it could be either the male with the canine or the, you know, the uh, shepherd here or the male veteran with the collie and the female veteran with the shepherd. Doesn't matter. You just choose one of each type of human and dog and that will be your character player cards. Okay, any unused player uh, cards and pieces will be returned to the box. They will not be used for the game. All right, now I jumped away from the map here for a minute to pick out the characters because I'm going to add the ally cards to the monster deck. Okay, the ally cards have a character on one side and the monster deck symbol on the back side. All right, now to play the ally deck, first thing we're going to do is go through our cards here and remove any characters that players have selected in this case the female hunter and the female firefighter and we're going to remove them from the game we're going to return them to the box i am also going to remove the veteran and the dog because i'm trying to save space and if i ever need the allied deck it'll take up too much room all right so with the remaining cards what you're going to do here is you're going to give those a shuffle and then you are going to decide how many of these ally cards you want to use the rule books say between three and six and then we're going to simply select three of said cards one two three ah, ah, ah. all right and we'll return the rest of them to the box for the ally cards that we have saved we will take them and we will take the monster deck that we were using and we will separate the boss cards from the monster deck and shuffle those into the monster cards next you will look back at the mission setup here and see what the monster deck setup is in some of them they will say remove one or two of the boss monsters and set them aside for later use and then shuffle the remaining monster cards some of them have you shuffle both monsters in some of them like this one will have you stack the deck all right so for our setup here it says separate the two boss cards here we're going to split the monster deck in half and then we are going to shuffle each of the two uh boss cards into a separate deck here so we got the tank here on the one here the missile tank on the one stack the ai core leader on the other and then we are going to shuffle these separate piles into separate piles again <laughs> you know, keeping them separate all right now once we have shuffled the two decks separately i have the tank boss on this side here on the right what we're going to do is we're going to take the pile with the tank boss on it gonna put it on top of the uh pile with the other balls on it not shuffle them just stack them on top of each other and this is your monster deck now at this point normally you would attach a monster to your character however this um mission doesn't call for that all right now we're going to go back to the mission set up here and we are going to finish what it says to do so in this case we're going to place star a b and c at least two tiles away from each other and the military base and then we're going to place three monster tokens on the star tokens okay all right so as you can see we have three objective tokens here a b and c we have to place it at least two away from the military base 
and then we have to place them at least two spaces away from each other two tiles away from each other this is another way you could do the difficulty thing you could you know place them a little further away from you need to as long as it's you know that two spaces in this case or three or whatever it is depending on the mission or you could simply just you know put them straight line as you can and hope you get lucky place that now we're going to place three monster tokens on each of these tiles leaving them face down we're not going to reveal them yet all right next we're going to take the two dice the big dice we're going to place them off to the side of the board for now and we're going to give each player one of these little dice next each player is going to take their character uh, deck give that a shuffle and then they're going to draw four of these cards for their starting hand they are also going to take their character card here as we can see it's double-sided one side has color on it and the character's ability on it if we look on the other side however though we have it grayed out no ability and we have some numbers here and a skull and crossbow and on the back we want the colored side face up with the ability showing and we are going to give that player the die the small die with the uh, one pip facing up that is your uh, hunger counter along with that we want to set our health meter here to the number in the top right corner of the character card here that is their health all right so we just spin the dials to they reach the right number here in this case 34 for the hunter it'd be 24 and i just realized i got the wrong thing for her all right now under most of the scenarios you would then draw one of these monsters from the monster deck and attach it to your character and to attach it you simply place it face up somewhere in your player area showing that it's attached to you all right now if it says draw another monster like the zombie one does which is not in this uh, scenario i'm just using it as an example then you would draw another monster card and attach it to uh your character uh, like i said normally you would do that this scenario says do not attach any monsters so i'm just going to tuck him back here somewhere now we are going to take the player's standy or mini depending on what you're using or if it's available in the set and we're going to place it on the starting space now normally this would be the van however in this mission it is the military base because the van was removed but like i said in most normally it is the van we have a deck of cards here which will take place of the dice during the spawning phase of the game which we'll get into um this will help with the uh difficulty of the game if you use this there's less randomness on where monsters are going to spawn however if you do decide to use this deck there are some number cards in them which correspond with the dice you know 2 through 12 and then there are some other cards here which will make the difficulty a little more easier or harder there's some surprise attacks stuff like that there's also some you know quiet days or reshuffle this deck and there are also some cards that are not valid to this game okay these are used for another standalone uh, expansion for this called the uh, wilds or something like that we're going to remove these from the game if you have them okay so it would be the exposure nightfall daybreak hostile and trade okay the cards will be removed from the game completely they are not applicable to the base game of of uh, maximum apocalypse these other cards you could choose to use just the number cards or you could choose to add in some of these other uh surprise attacks or quiet nights all right regardless however once you remove those cards that are not applicable to the base game here you will shuffle the rest of these cards and put them off to the side where at least somebody can reach them and pass them out all right um that is basically the setup the final thing you have to do is choose a first player you can do this however you want and you are set up to play maximum apocalypse stay tuned for a rules explanation all right gang the uh, object of maximum apocalypse depends on the scenario you're playing in our case we have to go through these uh, tiles here with these monster tokens and the uh, objective tokens on it and we have to defeat all the uh, uh, monsters on that tile and get back to the military base if you complete this objective you will win the game if you fail the objective obviously you lose the game you can also lose the game if a player ever has to draw from their player uh, their character deck and they cannot you do not reshuffle this deck if you go to draw one you can't you lose the game if a player's health ever goes down to zero they lose the game if they don't have an ally i'll get in that a little later on and finally if 
you ever have to place a monster token on the board and there are none to draw from the supply, you lose the game. And obviously, if you lost the scenario, you lose the game. All right, so starting with the first player, players will go through six phases of the game and then it'll go on to the next player until the winning condition is either met or lost. All right, I normally play with as soon as one player dies, uh, the game is lost. You could play it up until, you know, only one player is left on the board. The other players just sit out and that player either wins or loses the game on themselves. Like I said, normally it's a co-op game, so as soon as one player loses, all of them lose. When I play, you can do however you want. All right, now the first phase of the game is the spawning phase. At this point in the game, we will take any monster cards that were attached to us that were stunned from the previous round and we will flip them facing up so that they sh are at full strength and able to do what they do all right so if they're stunned they would be sideways you would flip them all right then we will roll the dice and we will take a look at the sum of both dice whatever the pips equal to is the number we are looking for if it is a seven you got a lucky break nothing happens in most scenarios not all depends on the scenario if you wrote a number that is not out on the board okay it's not face up on the board then you ignore this uh, phase of the game you move on to the next one if you rolled a number that one of the players is on that player will take a card from the monster deck and place it face up in front of them attaching it to them to the right of any cards that are already in their player area and they would go down to the bottom of the card and do any of the effects that uh the monster would have okay if it says draw you would draw another monster card if it says attack you would attack the player etc etc we'll get in that in a little bit now if there are two players on a tile and the monster would spawn on there then each player would draw a monster card and attach it to their player area and do any of the effects of said card. All right, and if there were more than two players, however many players are on the tile when it is spawned, they would, each player on the tile would take a card and place it in their player area, attaching it to their, uh, their player. If we rolled and the sum equals to one of the tiles being shown, the value is indicated up here in the top right in the monster symbol with a number on it. Don't remember if I said that. But if it is rolled and the value is exposed, then we would take one of these monster tokens and place it on each tile that has that value number on it. All right, now we can have no more than three monsters on a tile. So if we rolled the five again and we were to place another monster token on there, but we already had three, we would simply ignore this, okay? We wouldn't place any uh, monster tokens on that tile, but we would any other tiles with the same value that had less than three monsters on it. I'm playing with the Allies expansion, the Allies if drawn from the monster deck, which is where they come from, will be attached to your uh, player just like a monster would be. All right, and at one point you can get them to ally. You know, you could recruit them, and we'll get into that a little bit. But for now, they would simply go up where the monsters are, just simply being attached to your player. Okay, now, instead of using the dice, we can use this monster spawn deck. Works similarly to the dice. You flip a card over, look for the value of the number on the card, which happens to be five in this case. You would place monsters on it. If a player is on it, you would give them a card. Uh, a monster card. If there uh, is no tiles out there with that number on it, you simply piss over that. All right, now, the monster spawn deck comes with some good cards and some bad cards in it. All right. These are the good cards. You would simply read what the cards do, and that would be the monster phase. You wouldn't draw another monster card. You just simply do what the card does, and that's the end of the monster spawn phase, unless the card tells you differently. Okay, if you draw, like, this draw two card, then each player would draw two monsters and place it in their play area. So this will make the game a little harder or easier, you know, a little less randomness with the dice and all that. Depends on how you play. If that's how you're playing, then that's how that works. All right, next step is a real hard one. It's the draw card phase, which means we draw a card from our player deck and place it in our hand. Okay, we have a hand limit of 10 cards, and this hand limit is 10 cards 
of either the, uh, the character cards, the scavenger cards, or a combination of both. Okay, you cannot have more than 10 cards. If you were to draw a card at this point and you had more than 10 cards, you would still draw the card, place it in your hand, and then you would have to discard either that card or another card in your hand to the appropriate pile, whether it be a scavenge discard pile or your player uh, discard pile. All right, now phase three is the player action phase. Okay, you have to take four actions. There are two different types of actions. One that I call action point actions and then one free actions. You could do as many of these action point actions as you want, as, you know, up to four of them. Okay, so you could do one action four times or you could do one of each action once. The free actions, you could do one of these actions per turn one of each of the three different actions per turn for free all right so we'll get into the ones that cost points first action is movement we can move in any orthogonal direction that we choose to one space okay that is one point of movement action if we enter a space that has an unrevealed tile on it we would flip that unrevealed tile on it and we would look at the bottom of the tile and see what effects there are okay now there's several this one says test and what we would do then is we would take these two dice we would give them a roll and then we would look at our stealth which is the symbol here on the on the top right below that uh, health uh, number there okay if the number we rolled is equal to or less than that number we pass the test we do whatever the tile says if it is higher than that number you fail the test and you do whatever the tile says for failing the test all right so in this case it's a river we succeed it we can move on to the tile if we had failed we would simply stay where we're at and we would lose that action okay the tile would be revealed but we could not move on to it we'd have to move on to it later and try and test again some tiles like the form tile here says get a free scavenge action when revealed all right so we would do that we would go to the appropriate scavenge the deck which is indicated up here and we would take that card and put it in our hand or play it depending on what the card is i'll get back to that in a second and uh that would be that okay all right so if it says reveal you do whatever it says when you flip the tile over all right some say to do things when you enter a tile all right in this case it says draw a card when it says draw a card it means your character card if it meant a, a monster card it would say draw a monster card in this case we would draw a card from our deck place it in our hand however we entered this uh location here with three monster tokens in that case we're going to take one card for each token we are going to place that up in our player area attaching them to our our players going from left to right again and then we would remove the tokens from the tile and replace them to the supply i almost forgot this part if we want to move into a space that has a monster token on it and we do not have any monsters attached to us we could do a stealth test meaning we can roll to see if we can sneak by it okay we would roll the two dice add up the value of the pips if it is at or below our stealth, then we win. If it is above that, we would lose the stealth test. And instead of picking up the monster, we could leave the monster token where it is and continue on our way. If you enter a tile that says stop, you stop and do what it says. Basically, you lose an action. All right, so these tiles will have either uh, the keyword enter on it, uh, reveal, um, stop, test, action or uh there was another one it'll help you reduce your uh, end that's what it was end if you end on a space an effect will happen at the end of your turn second action a player can take is draw a card from their character deck place it in their hand that's the second action that costs some an action point to do third action is to play a card from your hand all right now if we look at our cards here there are two different types of cards there are gear cards which have a backpack symbol up on the top left and then there are instant cards which have this uh, uh danger symbol here on the the top left if we play an equipment card we would simply place that down in front of our play area below our character card here 
and it is now equipped we can use it from this point on all right now each character has four slots to hold equipment and if we look up here in the top uh, left here in the backpack there's a number that it tells you how many slots that equipment takes up in your backpack so to speak there is an actual backpack card we'll get in a second if you look here we got a shotgun that costs two the lighter cost one that's a total of three uh, uh, slots in their equipment pack they have one more let's say they loaded the ladder okay now at this point if a player ever wanted to discard one of these they could simply discard it or they can choose to swap it out with another card that is similar you cannot have two cards of the same type in your player two types of gear cards in your player with the exception of fuel i'll get back in that in a second all right now if we take a look at these equipment cards here we got the shotgun and the lighter we can see symbols in the top right there that is basically your ammo for the card you can use the card a number of times equal to the number in that uh little icon there so in this case the lighter has two ammo the shotgun here has four ammos we would take one token of the respective ammo type for the number and place it on the card all right so the shotgun will get four of these ammo tokens the lighter here will get four of these gas or two of these gas tank tokens here okay and i'll get back into how to get your cards work in a little bit if we have one of these instant cards we would simply play it and discard it or attach it to one of the gear cards if we upgrade we simply read what it says on the bottom do what it says discard the card okay now take note some of them need another card to be in play and there's ranges on it we'll get back in the ranges in a second the fourth action we can take that costs an action point to do is the action of the cards or the action of the tiles on the board all right if we look down here in front of the firefighter you can see we have three equipped cards here and two of them have an action on it however this ladder has a passive action on it which is continuous it happens as soon as you equip your player with that card all right in this case we could cross rivers without uh, having to do a test uh, for the ladder there's also a discard here i'm saying that if we discard the card from being equipped that we could avoid drawing a monster card all right so that's some actions that you can take that don't specifically say actions you got to read the cards for your equipment to see how they work all right cards that do have actions you could take the action so in the case of the shotgun here it says deal three damage to one target and one damage to all targets in front of you so that's what the uh, gunslinger is going to do here uh, i'm sorry the firefighter is going to do here they are going to take one of these ammo tokens indicating that they are going to take the action and they are going to do three damage to one monster all right now it says mid-range there's three different ranges in the game there is short range which means the tile that you are on okay this could be monsters attacking you or you attacking monsters or different effects on the uh, on the game if they say a range on it you have to abide by the rules of the range short range is the tile that you are on okay so if i drew a monster and it said attack everything in um short range and there were more than one player on the tile that i was on then each player would be attacked by the monster likewise if you know it was some other effect like you know short range uh, food you could choose all players to gain two points of food or whatever it would happen to all players on the tile or in the range all right so like i said short range is the tile you are on mid range is the tile you are on and then one tile away orthogonally in any direction okay so say we had the hunter down here mid range would be here 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 and the tile that she is on all right long range is not the tile that you are on but any tile that is one space away orthogonally or diagonally and then any tile that is two spaces away uh, orthogonally all right so if the hunter were here long range would affect not the tile that she was on but it would affect this tile this tile this tile all the way around her and then it would affect this tile this tile this tile this tile this tile and this tile okay same with the bottom this tile and if there's one down here it would affect that all right so it'd be the two plus the ones 
orthogonally, just one space orthogonal or diagonal rather, and then two spaces orthogonally. Say we were in a situation like this, we were in mid range from each other, the shotgun will affect mid range things. We will attack this monster here, giving it three points of damage. We will take tokens from our supply and place the appropriate value of damage equal to what we had dealt okay and then it says we can give one damage to all targets in front of him so he has one two three four five targets in front of him each target in front of him gets one point of damage all right when the damage is equal to the number in the top right of the monster the monster is dead you discard that monster but be aware of anything that the monster says read the cards see how they interact with each other now throughout the game you'll be using the ammo remember every time you use the action you will remove one of these some of them you can remove two of them and do two actions for the price of one so to speak all right but when that happens and your gear is no longer equipped with ammo then you cannot use that action okay unless you refill the ammo there's a couple ways you could do this one is by playing an ammunition card and ammunition only works for the guns ammunition tokens all right and you would read the range and what it does all right some will say four reloads some will say you know two two tokens three tokens etc and you would simply place the appropriate amount of tokens on said uh card again and then you can reuse it until you empty it out okay now anything with the gas symbol works a little different in order to reload that you must have one of these fuel cards equipped to your player area remember you got by by the four slot rule all right and then when that runs out you would discard this and then you can reload anything with the fuel symbol on it all right and then you would discard the card that used to the appropriate discard pile another way you can reload a card that needs to be reloaded is to swap it out with a copy of said card and it will be fully loaded and you would discard the card to you know your player area all right remember you can't have two copies of the same card type you can't have two lighters two axes whatever it may be two rifles however that does not take effect for the fuel cards we'll get back to that in a second likewise any tiles on the board that has the action keyword on it you can do the action of that tile if you are on that tile all right, so here it says action move to another tunnel. So for one action point, I can move from this tunnel to this tunnel. All right, and the final action you can take that costs an action point to do is to scavenge. As we can see here, we have several different scavenge decks. We have red, blue, and green. Red equals fuel. Green would be food, and blue would be gear and ammo. That is mainly what is in the deck, but it's not only what is in the deck. We also have a couple surprises in the scavenge decks here. Okay, we have ambush, which means we would draw monsters, and then we have empty hand, which means nothing happens. We simply draw them and discard them. All right, if we get the ambush, we would draw it, uh, pick up a monster card for the players or players that it affects, and place them in front of you, and then discard this to the appropriate scavenge deck discard pile, which we have this handy dandy box here to hold them in order to scavenge we must be on a spot with the appropriate symbol on it all right so if we look here we have the military base which has red and blue which means we can scavenge either red or blue here at the farm it is only green so we can only scavenge green and we can only scavenge once per tile per turn unless the tile itself has a, a free scavenge on it when it's revealed in that case you would do the free scavenge and then you could scavenge on that tile one more time but normally unless it's revealed you can only scavenge once per tile per turn all right regardless if they have multiple scavenge symbols on them or not and like i said we would simply scavenge one card take it from the deck pick it up either put it in our hand or do whatever it says now we're going to get to this fuel tank uh, can here for a free action you can equip this or discard it you do not have to place it in your hand all right and and if you want the equipment like all other cards you can equip it by uh placing it there and removing another card if you met your uh you know your holding slot and then you would discard the card that you uh, replaced it with all right and the scavenge cards are different some will help you with uh, hunger some will be gas some will be uh medical stuff depends on the pile it is in like i said not all of them are nice some of them are a little nasty 
All right, so they are the five actions that cost an action point to do. You must do four of these. You could do one four times, you know, four one time. It's up to you. Technically, there's a sixth one. Some of the scenarios would say if you spend an action or two, you could do something pertaining to the specific uh, mission and scenario that you're on. All right, so we could also do three free actions per turn if we choose to. We don't have to, but we can. And we can only do these once per turn. So the three free actions are we can choose to discard two of our uh, player cards from our hand into our discard pile. And then we can draw one from our uh, draw pile and put it in our hand. The second free action we can do is if we are on a tile that the mission that we are doing requires us to drop stuff off of, we can do that. All right. So if it said we needed ammunition, if we are on the tile for free, we could drop off the ammunition car by the tile saying that we used it. Now, the missions will say things like we need one fuel card per player, one fuel per player in the game. All right. Or they'll say we need one food per player in the game. Now with the food cards, it is an actual card. It is not what the actual number of hunger um, that will be decreased by is. It is the actual card, not the value of the card. So for free action, we could drop any cards uh, that we need for the mission on a tile that the mission calls for. And this also includes uh, tokens. Okay, and the final action we can do for free is if we are on the same tile as another player, we could trade as many scavenge cards as we want to with that player as long as they agree. All right, so we could trade, take, or give as many cards as we want to as long as they're scavenge cards to another player. And then that player would put their cards in the hand and we would put any cards we took from them in our hand and continue on our way. All right, now you cannot trade player cards to other players, just the scavenge cards. And likewise, you cannot discard scavenge cards for the uh, player cards for that other free action. All right, so they are the three free actions. The next phase is the monster activation phase. If we look at the monsters, we can see they have a value here. That is what they are going to attack with, the value right underneath their health uh, value there. All right, they will deal that many damage to any player attached to them or any player in range. So in this case, it's a mid-range. This monster here will deal three damage not only to my firefighter, but also to the hunter because she is in mid-range, in range of this monster. So the firefighter will lose three points of damage. The uh, hunter will lose three points of damage. We'd go to the next monster resolve that one that's another two points and then we'd go to the next one resolve that another four points and so on calculating all the points of damage and uh you know adjusting our life gauge here we would also take a look down at the bottom and see if anything happens when they attack or are destroyed and you know do do so accordingly we have the uh, allies here once they are allied once we recruit them they will be able to take damage also Okay, once their damage is reduced to zero, they are discarded from the game. All right, and we'll get back into the ally cards in a little bit. All right, so that's basically the monsters. They will attack you or anybody in range. You would go from left to right, resolving one at a time until you are done with all the monsters that are attached to you. Again, pay attention to range. Short range is the tile you're on. Mid is any one tile orthogonally. Long is two tiles or diagonally or one tile diagonally away from you are not the tile you are on remember that long range is not the tile you are on the other two are the tiles that you are on all right so the final phase of the game is the hunger phase okay if at this point you are on any tile or anything that says end then you would resolve that now okay then you will go into the hunger phase so every turn that you do not feed yourself you will move your hunger die up one pip value all right so we started off in a hunger of one we're moving it up to two if we were at five and we were to go to six in this case we would take our card and flip it over showing the great outside without the player's uh, special ability on it and we would place the hunger die on the first slot here in the top of the column there two all right and then we would take two points of damage all right 
if we still don't feed ourselves the next turn, instead of the hunger die going up, it would simply slide down one more slot and we lose that amount of damage. All right, so here it will be four, six, eight, etc. Until you get to the end, if you get to the skull and crossbones here, your character is dead, you lose the game. All right, now as soon as you play a food card, the die will go back to whatever amount of pips that the food card reduced. In this case, it's two. But as soon as you get to five, you flip this card back over. You now get your special ability back. And next time you go to six, it'll do the same thing. You'll flip over. You'll put it on the two slot. You'll lose two points. Every time you're on there without feeding yourself, you'll lose more points until you die or feed yourself. All right, so just remember, if you're on six, as soon as you feed yourself, you go to five. This will flip back from the starvation to the regular character, and you can use any abilities on it. You can never go above six on the hunger. You can never go below one on the hunger die. If you have any status effect tokens on you, you will lose one point of health for each token on you or card if it's a status card. Okay, so here I have two of these uh, hazmat tokens. I will lose one point for each token, bringing me down two points in health. If I had three, it'd be three, etc. All right, this also applies for any status cards you have on you they do stack all right then you would check to see if you won the scenario if you did hooray you won if you did not lose the scenario play would go on to the next player they would do all this and it would continue until you won the scenario or you lost the scenario now before we get going a couple things i did not mention all right as i said i play as one player dies everybody loses but if you're playing you know to the last man standing type deal and a player dies okay what we would do is we would take the monster cards and we would place one monster token on the tile that that player character died on remember three monster tokens per tile and then we would discard the monster cards to a discard pile if this monster deck ever runs out you could reshuffle the deck and create a new one however like i said if your character cards run out you die all right now any thing that was equipped to that player will be left by the tile that the player was on and players could come by later on and pick them up you would return you know the player card their deck and their uh, standee or their uh, mini to the box all right now let's talk about the allies and then we're going to get going into a gameplay all right like i said when you draw an ally you can attach it to yourself like a monster, you cannot use the ally yet. You have to recruit it. And to do that, we will go here in the top left corner. And we will have to discard a number of scavenge cards equal to the number in the symbol. Okay, so the number in the color of the symbol. In case the gunslinger here, I would have to discard two blue scavenge cards. And then I can recruit my, uh, my ally. I would place it my gear section you know so I, I know it's with me or next to my character card somewhere where i know it's not a monster or quick gear and then from that point on it may give us additional uh backpack space depending some give you one some give you two i think i don't remember any being zero but it's one or two you could do the action of the allied card same with your player card you could do the action for one action point and like the player card they also have a health so if the health ever reaches zero then the ally is removed from the game and uh, you cannot use the ability of it anymore now also with the allies if your main player ever dies and you have an ally recruited to you in that case when you finish dropping off all the gear and the monsters and all that you return your uh, character card and their deck back to the box you can then take your allies character card and deck from the box discard this monster card from the game and you can use the allies deck from here on out almost forgot about the veteran and dog a little bit uh a little bit more rules to the veteran and dog than there are normal characters all right if you have the veteran and the dog they both have a different health count if the dog is attacked and it is at zero you will lose the dog 
uh, but you can still play the game with the veteran. Likewise, if you lose the veteran, you can still play with the dog. You're not going to do much with the dog, but you can still play with the dog. The veteran has a slot of four in, you know, carrying gear. The dog cannot carry any gear. The dog can have the dog collar attached to it, which has a zero slot for the equipment, but it is the only card that can be attached to the dog. All right, and once it is attached, you could do its passive, uh, uh, action here now when dealing monsters you have to choose between the dog or the veteran and he has to do this equally as possible okay so say i had to draw three monsters i would have to attach one to the dog and then one to the veteran on the third monster i had to make a choice on whether to attach it to the dog or the veteran all right say i attach it to the veteran the next time i were to draw a monster i would have to attach it to the dog until it was equal to the veteran or vice versa and then i could attach it to the other one and so on but we have to get it as equally as possible if we can all right and the monsters will deal damage to whoever they are attached to whether it be the dog or the veteran you know the range thing takes effect so that is basically the rules for uh maximum apocalypse I'm going to rejigger this, and we can come back and do a gameplay. So stay tuned. All right, gang, let's play Maxim Apocalypse. Let's see what the mission is. We are playing mission 11 here. Protect the base. It says, thanks to your supply run, which happened in the last uh, scenario, the Resistance has a team working on some large-scale homemade bombs. However, your little convoy didn't go unnoticed, and there are several robot strike forces patrolling the area in search of our base. That sucks. You will need to destroy these patrols before the robots find the base. All right, then it goes through mission setup, which I already did. We explained the mission setup. Here are the objectives. We have to destroy all the monster tokens on each of the star token tiles. And all players have to return to the military base when all of the star tokens have been destroyed. All right, now when we get to the tokens, if there is no monster tokens on the tile, you may spend an action to secure the area and remove the token from the game. All right, so basically, what I gotta do is go to these three objective tiles, which have the objective tokens on it, kill all the monsters on the tile and then we spend an action to collect the tile remove it from the game once we get all three of them and we make it back to the military base we win the game all right so we start off with the firefighter we have four cars to start with and we have one on the hunger die he has 34 health and his action is remove all monster tokens from a tile and draw two monster cards could be helpful and then we have the hunter over here she has a health of 24 and her hunger also starts at one and her action is reveal two adjacent map tiles without triggering their effects so she could reveal two adjacent tiles to her that are orthogonal flip them over and not have to suffer the consequences or benefits of that tile when they are revealed first thing we're going to do is the monster phase we're going to roll the dice or we could draw from the monster spawn deck let's take a roll the dice and we'll see if the value adds up to any tiles on the board that are revealed we do not have anything but zero on the board so we don't have to worry about that if it were a seven we wouldn't have to worry about it either with the exception of some scenarios you had to look at the scenario objectives and, and set up and all that for that um also if a number was revealed and one of our characters were on that tile Instead of placing a monster token on the tile, you would attach a monster to our characters. And then we move on to the next phase. If a tile is revealed and it equals to the number of pips on the dice, then we would place one monster token on each tile that has that value on it up to a maximum of three monster tokens all right first round we don't have to worry about the monster spawn because the only thing out is a value of zero now if any of our monsters were out and they were stunned at this point during the monster spawn phase we would untap them put them back up so that they could attack us again all right as the first phase the monster spawn phase second phase is to draw a card placing it in our hand the third phase is to do our player actions okay now we can do a number of actions that cost points or we could do three actions 
once per turn per actions for the free actions. All right, the ones that cost us points, we have to do four actions, okay? It could be one action four times or four actions one times, but it has to be four actions. The actions are we can move going from one tile to another and then resolving any effects of said tile. We can play a card from our hand, okay? And then either equip it or do the uh, one-off that the card is, depending on what it is. All right, say we threw down the trusty axe. Another action we could do is the action of the card or tiles that we are on. Okay, if it says action on it, you can do that action, whether it be an equip card or your uh, your action card, tile on the board, your um, your ally cards. You could do an action if it says you do an action. Another action that costs a point is to draw a card and you simply draw it, place it in your hand. Final action that you have to pay for is you can scavenge if you are on a tile with a scavenge symbol on it then you would draw one card from the the correct pile and place it in your hand or play it depending on what the card is you can only do this once per turn per tile unless you have a free scavenge action when you reveal a tile or a card effect takes you know does it all right so there you are the actions that you have to use an action point to do and also in this scenario we can spend an action point to pick up one of these objective tokens, different objectives, uh, different scenarios will have different actions for that scenario in the book if they are applicable. The three free actions we can do is drop off supplies that we need to complete the action at the tile that they need to be uh, dropped off at. So say we need a fuel, we could drop off the tile, the card for the fuel at the tile that it needed to be at. If we are on the same space as another player, we could trade any scavenge cards with that player. And the final free action we can do is discard two of our cards and then draw one from our draw pile. So they are the actions we can take. All right. So let's get into it. Uh, like I said, firefighters up first. They are going to move. So first thing we're going to do is go here. We're going to flip this around and see what it says it says end okay so we can move on to it this doesn't take effect right now if we ended our turn on here we could decrease our hunger by one We're probably not going to do that but if it said something like reveal or enter then we would take the effects of that when that came up all right second action i'm going to do is i actually should start Equipping myself. So I'm going to play a card, which gives me the trusty act. That's two actions. For my third action, I am going to equip the fire helmet, which will reduce damage by monsters. We'll be fighting a lot of these, so I'm going to need that. And for my fourth and final action, I am going to play the lighter, which, as you can see, will now take up all four of my slots. All right, now I have the lighter out. It has two gas tanks up there. So that is loaded with two fuel tanks. Every time I use the action for this now, I would have to spend one of these fuel tanks to do the action. If it ever is empty, I cannot use that until I reload the the, uh, the lighter. All right, so that is all four of the firefighter's actions. Again, I could have done a couple free ones. I could discard this. I could do one free one per free action per turn. All right, so... I could trade if I were on the same spot as another player once. I could um, drop off supplies at a tile if I were on it once. Or I could uh, discard two cards to draw a card once. I could do each of these once per turn. All right, so now we're going to attack with the monsters. We don't have any. Don't have to worry about that. Now we're going to hunger phase. We're going to reduce or increase the hunger by one, bringing us up to two. If we had any status effects, we would also take care of that now meaning we would uh, reduce our health by the number of points per status effect token or card or whatever we had you don't have to worry about that that is the end of the firefighter's turn we're gonna go over to the hunter which i will forever more be calling jen and i'll be the firefighter so i can keep track of this all right so first thing we're gonna do we're gonna roll all right we got nine as you can see there is no nine out we don't have to worry about that next we draw a card and we got a headshot long range that's a good one all right it deals a lot of damage if the bow is equipped with her all right so now that's what we're going to do our first action we are going to equip the crossbow to her and that takes eight 
Ammo tokens. All right, so that's her first action. Next action, she's going to equip this machete for a short range where the crossbow is mid range. So she's covered both ends here. Slide these down a little bit. Uh, next. All right, for her third action, she's going to move down a tile and she gets shelter. Uh, and for her final action, she's going to use her player action here, which is recon. She's going to check out two adjacent tiles and see what happens. She ignores any effects by it. So this is good because if she reveals, she'd draw a monster. And if she revealed here, she'd enter turn immediately, which wouldn't be too bad. But once she entered, she loses action. All right. So that is the end of that. We go into the monster attack. No monster still. We go into the hunger. Move the hunger die up one. That is the end of that. It goes over to me with the fireman. All right. Fire woman, rather. All right. Roll the die. Nine. Got a nine. We place one monster token there. Remember? Maximum of three. We draw a card. Ooh, where's my axe? But I already got my axe, so it doesn't really help me. All right, for his first action, he's gonna, she's gonna go to the hospital now. It says enter, restore health. We can restore the health by one point when we enter the hospital. Unfortunately, we didn't do any damage, so we don't have to uh, restore health. We can only go up to the number of health that is printed on the card. Thirty-four in this case can't go above that. All right, and if we ended our turn on it, we would uh, restore two health. So that was his first action. Second action is going to search. Now it has the red symbol on it. So we take the red scavenger deck. Now I have an option with the fuel card here. I could equip it immediately for free or I could discard it. Okay, now the problem is I'm at my max here for equipment. So I'm just going to discard it. Uh, I could replace one of my equipment cards with it discarding the equipment card and then having the fuel take that slot and you know give additional slots if it were to do so um, by freeing up one with two slot on it but that's not what i want to do all right so that kind of sucked all right so okay third action we are going to use her special ability we're going to move all of the monster tokens from this tile we're going to draw two monster cards and attach it so that's one and here is the second one the second one says destroy deal two damage this monster attacks for eight if player did not move this turn okay so when this monster is destroyed it'll deal two damage if we do not move then when it attacks it'll cause eight damage so fourth action is Gus to go move somewhere. All right, I'm gonna do. It. I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna reveal this one. I'm gonna move to this one for the fourth action. Okay, so I get a free scavenge because it is the farm. It says reveal when uh, when there. I get fuel, which isn't helping me. But at least I know I can dig them out later on if I have to. All right, if I can with the card. That is her fourth action. Unfortunately, she could not pick this up. The monster, the tiles clear monsters. She could pick them up, but she doesn't have an action to do it. That is the end of her turn. So we will increase hunger by, whoop, almost forgot. It's the monster turn. All right, so this one will hit for two points of damage. Bring her down to 32, and then this one will hit her for four points bring her down to 28 right, and if there were any long range monsters in here it would also hit the hunter because it's two spaces away from her. all right but it's not so that's that now we do the hunger and we flip it up to three that is the end of that we did not win obviously goes over to jen with the hunter let's roll we get five and we do not have any fives out on the board yet so we're good with that do we oh, no it's 11. all right so now we draw a card oh cover of night to draw all three cards from any scavenge deck and discard one of them all right so let's see she's got one more slot she could do this uh bear card a uh, bear trap it says discard deal five damage to any player or any monster she's not gonna do that uh gonna go one and then she she will go two spend an action to pick this up I'm gonna put it over here showing that we did it for her fourth action she will 
use her machete and deal three damage to, uh, we'll say this guy here. She's going to help the firefighter out, being that it's a short range weapon and she is in short range. Okay, now she could do this. She could spend an action to deal three damage to one target and then may spend another ammo to attack an additional target. Yeah, and it's worth three. You know what? Maybe she'll do that. Yeah, maybe she'll do that instead. All right, so she'll use this. Instead, she'll deal three damage to each of them. Spending two ammo tokens. All right, so that's the end of that. Now, monsters would attack. We are on the same space, so we have to look to see if there's any short-range monster attacks here. There are not, so Jen would not get attacked. We're good on that. Then we move into the hunger. Okay, and that is the end of that. We go back over to me with the firefighter. Let's roll some dice. Six. We do not have... Oh, we got one here. Six. So we add a monster token. All right, draw a card. Let's see what we get here. Fireman Snanima, move up to three spaces. Here's my axe. Where's my axe? I already got my axe, so this isn't needed. It's a pretty good card, though. You can draw an axe and then draw another card after you discard it. All right, lighter. Got a lighter out there. Don't need that. Energy drink. You are immune to hunger damage until the start of your next turn. Draw a card. So I could play that. Not have to worry about hunger until the next turn, but... I'm going to see that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and kill all some of that. We're going to swing my trusty axe, which is short range. All right, and that'll do four points of damage. So it's not quite enough to take out this guy here. We'll get there with the next swing. So that's the first action. It's going to attack this guy for four points. And then I'll do another attack for four more points, killing him. So that is... Two actions. We discard the monster. His third action. Um, well, might as well start moving. Going to move. Uh, you know what? I'm going to scavenge first. Need some food. All right. So, oh, got some food. Scavenge, and then he's going to move. All right. So that's third and fourth. I did them a little out of order. All right. So now, this will reduce his hunger by two. Her hunger by two. So we'll use that the next uh, turn. Knock her hunger down. Remember. If you go into starvation, meaning you go to the sixth pip on the die, you have to flip the card over and you start losing health. And if you lose too much health, you die. So I'm going to keep an eye on the hunger and the point, uh, health points, at least. All right, so that's the end of that. We go into the monster phase. The monster will attack the firefighter for four points. Maybe I should have got rid of this one first. You do more damage. Yeah, the other one only did two. I wasn't thinking. All right. And then we take care of the hunger and any end effects for the end of the round. We don't have any. It goes over to Jen. She's going to roll. We're going to get a nine. And we are going to put another monster token on nine. What is it, my Ten. All right. Now, I'm going to draw a card. Ooh, another headshot. Okay. Cover a knight. Okay, draw. Oh, you know what? She's going to do that. She's going to play cover and knight. It's going to say, draw three uh, cards from any scavenge deck and keep one of them, or discard one of them. So one, two, three. We're going to draw three cards. She's going to choose one of these to keep, or two of these to keep and one to discard. Food is always good. Uh... I'm going to get her with the fuel. It's a free equip, so it's not an action. She's going to keep the food and the fuel. She's going to discard the merchant uh, medical supply. All right, so that was her first action. Second action is going to be to move down here with the firefighter, and she will hit this guy here for three points of damage for her third action. Her the final action is to move. Okay, so she's going to come here, and let's see what we got. Oh, we got a farm. All right, so she's going to move here. We draw a green card for a free action scavenge. Get some ammunition, which will help her out. And that is the end of that. Now, monster phase. She doesn't have any. We go to the hunger. Next round, I'm going to start worrying about the hunger. Uh, she could reduce by one over. To me. Okay, you roll. 
get five. Uh, any fives out there? Negative. All right, I'll draw a card. Let's see what we got. Got the trusty X. All right, so here's our whole turn. First action we're going to do is play this food card. We're going to return this to the uh, scavenge deck discard pile, not to your cards. I do that a lot. <laughs> All right, your discard. All right, so that's the first action. So we're going to reduce the food by two. Second action, third and fourth action is we're going to take care of this guy here. We are going to hit him three times for 12 points. For 12 points of damage, which will bring him to death. Alright, now it says destroy, <laughs> deal two damage. I'm going to deal one damage because I forgot I had my helmet, which reduces damage by one. So it should have reduced it one point last time, and this will be reduced by one. Alright, this monster will attack you for eight if you did not move this turn, which I did not, so I'm going to go with another seven. All right, that destroys this monster. Now we go to the hunger effects. We bring that up. The monsters didn't attack us, obviously, because we destroyed it. And that is the end of that. Now we will go into the hunter's turn, starting with the die. All right, six. We have two sixes out there, right? One six. So we have a second one. Uh, only one. Trying to cheat myself already. All right. Now we draw a card. And we have Machete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got seven cards. Got to remember to keep the uh, limit. It's a combination of both types of cards, whether player cards and scavenger cards. All right. For her first action, she is going to. She will reveal two adjacent tiles. So. She'll reveal this one and this one. All right. And again, her character ability says she doesn't suffer the consequences of revealing a tile. All right. So that is her first action. Her second action is going to be uh, to scavenge. Let's see if we get some more food. Oh, she does. She got better food. Oh, five. She's going to hold on to that. All right. I was going to reduce the hunger, but I'm not going to wait. All right. Third action. She could move in here. All right, her third action is going to go to the mountains here. It says draw a card, so you would draw player's card. Put it in your hand. Oh, camouflage. This might be helpful. All right, her third action. One, one two, three. Her fourth action. She's going to use her reveal thing again. All right. She's going to flip these around. The forest and... Let me see the hospital, or uh, the one above the uh, meadows here. Oh, the airport. Cool. So the airport's cool. You could use that to go to any reveal tile on the board, as long as you have an action point. All right, so that is the end of that. She doesn't have any monsters, but she does get some hunger. And the next round, we're going to take care of that. Over to me. Let's roll the spawn. Seven. We get lucky, nothing happens. We draw a card. Let's see, get the ladder. Um, all right, he's good for food right now. Should get him to, uh, her to the hospital, though. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move one. I'm going to scavenge. Oh, and I get a monster card. That sucked. All right, so what happens is... We discard this card into the appropriate discard pile. We draw a monster and we attach it. But we got lucky. We got an ally. All right. Now, the allies are non-recruited at first. All right. They're just attached to you at first. But you can recruit them. Once you recruit them, you can use their abilities. And if your character dies, you can switch them out for the allies deck and use the ally as a character after you, you know, clean up. But for now, we're just going to place them up where the monsters would be. And for this ally, the mechanic... We need to spend three green scavenge cards, okay, discard them from our hand in order to recruit that ally. And then we can do their special ability and whatnot. So that was action one and action two. <laughs> All right. Action three is to go here, and that will restore my health by one. Action four. And the final one is I'm going to scavenge from the hospital and we get a food. 
Alright, let me check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Ooh. Alright, so that's the end of the firefighter's turn. Being that I ended my turn on the uh, toggle there, I get two more health. I'm doing that now so I don't forget. We go into the monster phase. There are no monsters to attack me, so we give ourselves the hunger. Going from three to four, that is the end of the firefighter's turn. Goes back to Jen with the hunter. Let's spawn. Twelve. We got twelve out. Boom, 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 boom. Nope. All right. We draw a card. Nine, ten. All right. We got ten. Ten cards here. All right. Here's what she's going to do. First action. She's going to move and get some monsters. Let's see what happens here. One. Mid-range, deal damage to all players in range. Two, three, reduce damage to all robots by one. Oh, that sucks. All right, so we have to deal damage to all players in range. So that is three damage for her. Uh, this one will decrease the damage we deal by one. All right, so that was her first action was the move. She got all these guys. Um, her second action is to... Uh, we're going to hit him once, twice. So that's three actions. All right. Gives him four damage because it reduces by one. Okay, and we're going to spend another cartridge to hit this guy here. Okay, because of the special ability. Alright, so now it's the monster's turn to hit. So, they get three, seven, nine points of damage. Brings her to 12. But she's going to go into starvation with the hunger, because I forgot about it, which will give her an additional two more points in damage. All right. If she doesn't feed herself the next round, it'll be four points and then six and so on until she dies. All right, so I'm going to get her fed soon. All right, that's the end of that. Let's go back to the firefighter. All right. Seven. We get lucky. Let's see. Um... All right, we draw a flare. Long-range monsters are attracted to you. Uh, we could do that. We could get her off of them. Uh, I get closer to her. I'm trying to help her out. She's going to get whooped. <laughs> All right, so let me see here. All right, first action. We are going to play Fireman's Stamina. Move up to three species and then draw a card. So one, two, three. Now we draw a card. First aid. All right. This is good. Second action is we're going to play this card here. It's a short range, so anybody on the tile will have four health restored. Now, I do not have enough of these to uh, help him out. So, see, second action is I'm going to I'm going to scavenge, and we got spare parts. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. All right. For free action, I'm going to discard two of my player cards and draw a card. And I get the jacket. All right. I'm not going to equip that. So that is two actions. Remember, that one was free. Third action, I'm going to draw a card. Fire extinguisher. All right. Oh, I don't have enough to get there now. Oh, that sucked. I could play this and stun all the monsters, but I can't get there now. I don't have enough action. All right, fourth action. I'm going to move. Get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Draw one more card. All right, that is my final action. It is the monster's turn. I'll take two, uh, three points of damage because that's mid range. And then another four because of that. So seven points. Brings me down to 15. I gotta get a hand on these monsters. All right, over to Jen. Let's roll for the spawn. 12. 
I thought there was a 12 out, or was that during the setup? No, no 12. All right, general draw a card. All right, she's got 11 cards, so she has to discard one. Um, she'll discard this guy here, bringing her down to 10. All right, for her first action, she is going to play this food card and decrease her hunger by five. Okay, now, as soon as you go from six back to five, you are out of starvation. You can flip your card over and you now have the abilities again. Okay, it doesn't matter how many pips you reduce it to. As soon as you go from six to five, you are not starving anymore. All right, but if you go back up to six, then you become starving again and you start losing health. All right, that was her first action. Her second action is she's going to reload her gun, her crossbow here, all right? So, two bullets. Third action is to spend these and do some damage here. So, I'd like the two and two. Let's see if this is enough to kill them. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh, I need one more. Same here. I need a lot more here. I need 12 more here. All right. So that is her third action. Her fourth action is she's going to come down here and go to the gas station. Okay. And she gets a free scavenge, which gives her food. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She's good. Okay. Now I'm going to the monster attack phase. She will get three. Five, nine points of damage. We got to get her healed. All right. Leaving her with one. All right. Um, we move the hunger to two. It goes over to me. All right. Four. So any fours out. One here has three on it. Can't put any more. All right. We draw. I got ten cards now that I drew one. Uh and let's see what we're going to do here all right first thing we got to do we're going to move one spend the second action to get this taken care of for two um for three we're going to go up here and for four uh four We'll go into the airport. All right. That is the end of the firefighter's turn. Now, monsters attack. There are none. Uh, we go up to five. It goes over to Jen. We roll the dice. See what we spawn. All right. We got six, seven. Nothing happens. We draw a card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten cards. We're good there. For a first action, we are going to draw this. Okay, scavenge didn't work out for me. Second action, two, three. We're going to go there. So first action, second action, third action. The fourth action is we're going to attack this guy here and kill him. All right, so we're going to hit him with uh, the machete. Giving him two more points of damage, which would be two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve points. It's enough to kill him. And now we don't have to worry about him anymore. We could actually start hitting full strength again. All right. Now that is the end of that. The monsters attack. So being that Jen is in the shelter, these do not do any damage to me. All right. But this is a mid-range uh, monster. It's going to deal damage to him for three points. Minus one because of the helmet. So we're down to 13 points. Okay, now we do the hunger. And that is the end of Jen's turn. I could get Jen to the hospital or, or healed. All right, goes back to me. We're going to roll for the monsters. And we get a four. Any fours, any fours, any fours. And nope, 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 nope. One there. Still... Got all the monsters there. All right, draw a card. Let's see what we got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, I gotta get rid of one. I will get rid of the flare. Okay. Um. So let's see. My first action. All right, my first action is gonna be a free action. I am going to take a green card from Jen, and then I am going to. 
use an action to discard three green cards, which will give me my ally now. All right, so that was my first action, discarding these three cards to recruit my ally. All right, so now he can hold two more things, and we could reshuffle the discard pile back into our survival pile, giving us more life. All right, and he's got 13 health, so he could take some hits instead of me. All right, so that was my first action, was to recruit, basically. Um, second action, I am going to play the flare, which is a long-range uh, weapon, which means I cannot use it in the spot I am, but I can do it up to two adjacent spots orthogonally or one adjacent spot diagonally. All right, so I'm going to play this, and it says... All monsters in range are attached to you. So that's my second action. I'm going to attach these monsters from Jen to me. Okay, give her some breathing room. My third action is going to be to attack this guy, obviously. So let's see. The axe will give him some more damage. So I'll hit him twice with the axe for a total of eight damage. Two, four, six, eight, ten. That'll bring him up to eighteen. The fourth action I'm going to take is I'll move over here. All right, one, two, three. Oh, no, no, no. I already took the fourth action. Discard for one. Drew him over to me. Two, three. All right. So that is the end of that. We go into the monster phase. Mid range. Jen's protected because she's in the shelter. But it will hit me for 3, bringing me down to 10. This one will hit me for 2, bringing me down to 8. I forgot about the hunger, so we're going to go down another 2, bringing me down to 6. Okay, so now we'll take care of the hunger, which will bring it up to 6 and flip this guy over. Alright, so now I cannot use the special ability anymore. My sneak's a little reduced, I think, etc. That's the end of that. I actually could have used my uh, ally here to take some damage. I think I will do that. All right. He'll take two points of damage. Or no, you know what? He'll take three points of damage. All right. And I'll give myself three points back. Change my mind on that one. All right. That's that. Goes over to Jen. She's going to roll for spawning. And we got four. Uh, no fours out there, right? Nope. Except for this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She's got ten cards. So... She's going to draw one, and let's see. She's going to hold this, uh, but she's got to discard one. So let's see. Uh, she'll discard the bear trap because she's got two of them. All right, so now her first action is going to be to go one space here. Okay, second action is going to be to scavenge. All right, yep. And she's got a fuel. She's going to choose to discard it, not use it. Her third action is going to use the action of the tile, which is to go to the hospital, which will give her a one point of health. And her final action is to scavenge again, giving her ammunition. Ooh, okay, so one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, I got to discard a card, so I'm going to discard the uh, the flashlight. All right, now she ended her turn on the hospital, so she gets two more points of of, of health. And there's no monsters to attack her, but we do have to deal with the hunger, so it goes up by two. That is the end of that. Let's go to me, and we roll an eight, and I get a monster. I thought there was another one. Nope, I get a monster, so let's see what we got here. Oh, we got another ally, Gunslinger. Cool. All right. So, there's not recruited yet. We're just going to hold on to them. First thing I'm going to do is draw one of my cards. And then, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight cards here, so I'm good with that. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to search. I need some food. Oh, we got some food. Second thing I'm going to do is going to feed myself and get out of starvation. Okay. There we go. 
So what was that? I reduced by four. We go down to two. Third action. I'm going to use the airport and go to the military base, which upon entering will do two damage to any monster in front of me. So two. And 18 plus two is 20, which is enough to destroy this monster. But it will deal with anybody in mid-range four points of damage when it is destroyed. So I'm down to five. This monster gets discard it for my third or uh, my fourth and final action i will um i'm going to draw i'm gonna i'm gonna scavenge and hopefully well i got a backpack i was hopefully getting some food uh some some medical equipment all right so that is the end of that goes to the monsters this monster is going to attack i'm going to assign that to my ally here which will bring him up to five points let me just put the five on there all right Remember, he's got 13, and then he dies. All right, then we do our hunger. So we go up to three. That is the end of that. It is now a Jennifer's turn. Let's spawn some monsters. All right, we got 11. So the Oasis and the Farmer here. The Farmer. I screwed this up. Oh, she's in the... She is in and out, so she would have lost two points. Wasn't paying attention. Caught it. All right. She's going to die. All right, we draw. Uh, I got one of these. I'm going to discard because I'm at my card, my hand limit. All right, now for her first action, she's going to play this food card, which will reduce her hunger by four and get her out of hunger here or starvation here. Second action is to play this ammunition card here, which will give her four bullets. So we're going to equip her crossbow again. All right, her third action is going to play headshot. It says deal six damage to a target if you have the bow or crossbow equipped. So we're going to pick this, which is in long range. Again, not the tile we are on, but two tiles away orthogonally. One tile away diagonally from where we are on. And we will give this six points of damage all right for her final action she's going to move over here or not nah, she's going to stay there and restore all right so for her final action she's going to draw a card all right one two three four five six seven eight that's her final action she ended her movement in the hospital so she gets two health bringing her up to four due to hunger Goes down to three. Over to me. Let's roll. Ten. Uh, I'm good. Twelve. Eleven. No tens. Okay. Draw a card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got ten cards here. All right. We're good on that. First thing we're going to do is attack this guy here, which will be enough to finish him off. Okay. Second action is we're going to draw... From the scavenge deck gives me ammunition before we reload something could help her out all right for my third action all right next action i am going to play this card here which is fireman stanima move up to three spaces and then draw a card so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move one space here i am going to test my stealth i need a five or less i did not get it all right if i had passed i could move along without this monster being attached to me but this guy's going to get attached to me and we get this guy what you see draw place a monster token on all adjacent tiles that sucks so i go here and here Jen is on an adjacent tile, so instead of drawing a token, she will get one attached. Deal damage to all players in range. So, ooh, Jen gets knocked down to one. <laughs> I get knocked down to two. That didn't work out. All right, so I'm going to continue on. Okay, draw a card. Alright, now being I moved into the hospital, we get one point of health there. Okay, so that's the second action. Playing a card and then scavenging for my third action. Uh, 
All right, third action. I'm gonna spend one of these and deal two damage to him and two damage to him. Final action, I'm gonna use my ax here and I'm gonna deal two more damage, or four damage to him. To bring him up to six. Okay, now the monsters attack. He'll hit for three, but I have that hat, which knocks it down to two. Got lucky there. All right, and then we re increased the hunger by one. All right, and he ends it at the hospital, so we get two more points. That is the end of that. Goes over to Jen. All right, we got eight. Uh, ten, nine, six, eight. The airport. All right, general draw a card. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, so first thing she's going to do is she's going to spend one of these to deal three damage to this guy here. And then going to spend another one and deal three damage to this guy here. Okay, third action, she is going to scavenge, and she's going to discard that. Fourth action, she's going to die this round. Fourth action, um, uh, she'll hit it one more time with the axe, I guess, uh, or the machete. It's not enough to kill him, but he is going to kill her, so she would go up three because she ended her movement on the tile, but he would knock her down for three, killing her, and... That is the end of the game. So, uh, stay tuned for my final thoughts coming up next. All right, gang. So that was Maximum Apocalypse. I know I made some mistakes. Sorry for that. Uh, these videos are just to give you a, a flow of how the game works. Not it is definitely not for an exact rule, you know, thing. Um, before we get started, I'd like to say GDSA, Goddamn Scott Alden. He is the one who talked me into this. He mentioned his toys. That's why I went after this one. Scott, uh, you know, he, he uh, when he mentions a game twice, it means he liked it. And he's never steered me wrong with a game recommendation. I, I actually was looking at a game for my brother. He, he was looking for a survival game for my brother. Thought Robinson Crusoe was a little too complicated. Scott mentioned his toys. So I went out and I spent $170 last month on this system. I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, but that being said, I'm going to I'm gonna rip this apart a little bit. I got a reason for that, and we'll get back to that a little later on. So we'll start off with the components. All right, I wrote some stuff down here to remember. All right, so first thing I want to start with is this scavenge deck. All right, um, we can see the handgun here has the symbol for the uh, ammo and there's another handgun that's not what i want there we go where every other one has this magnifying or yeah the magnifying glass symbol on it this will confuse people in the beginning i, I think they should just either make the entire deck this ammo sis, uh, symbol here without a number on it meaning that it's a regular one and then if you get a handgun or a weapon that needs ammo you should uh you know put a number next to it um, actually, I, what I think you should the the designer should have done um, would would have been just to choose this symbol and like fuel and put it on the back inside these magnifying glasses. That way they could get rid of this board and all the confusion of you know it'll be faster to sort them. It's just my suggestion. All right, I was a first class RPG. I'm not a game designer. You can tell me to shove this on my ass. I don't care. Just state my opinion. All right. All right anyway. It's minor, but it, it, it could create some confusion to people, especially the first or second game you're playing, you know, if you're new to it. The next one is the artwork. The artwork doesn't match up on everything, and that bothers me. Like, here we go. This is the Firefighter's um, life counter. It doesn't match up with the artwork. And this one here for the Hunter, you really have to look at it closely to see that that is the Hunter. Um and there was another one with these life counters that the artwork really didn't match up. Uh, that being said, the minis that you do get in the game do match up with the artwork. You know, the stance and the pose and all that. A lot of games I've played where you get the 
the cards or the, the player boards and the mini looks totally different than the uh than the artwork on the rest of the the stuff for it so that is a plus um i do like that you do get standees or a mini yeah, for your options the only downside that it is there are different character cards and you only get one mini that only matches one type of character all right whatever one is basically on your character card deck is the one that you're going to get a mini for the other ones you do not i am assuming this is a kickstarter thing that you can buy these extra or something i don't know i didn't look for that far into it this is what i got with the game all right so i don't like that if you should say in the rule book or somewhere that this is sold separately or available separately or something to that you know extent the spawn deck here <laughs> again i'm thinking this is a kickstarter thing and it's I, I understand the reasoning behind it you got one deck you split between the three games in the system but the spawning deck that i got for the base game has five cards that are not applicable to the game at all they, they do not involve the game it's for a mechanism that is not in this game this will confuse people when they're looking through it because it does not mention anywhere that these aren't included in the game all right or aren't applicable for the game and uh there's the game organization i'll get back to that after i fill it up but basically when you have everything in in the box you know you get all these cool containers for the minis and some cards and stuff like that but when you got the card separated and then are individual stacks and you have some of the tiles and all that in this this container here that goes from game to game there's a lot of room in there even when everything that came in the game is out in that thing there's a lot of room it slides back and forth it it's you know they spent all this time on the pretty plastic but not the game itself it's a minor thing you could solve it with a piece of foam in there to stop the cars from sliding uh, around stuff like that but like i said minor thing. all right the rule for the most part i do like the rule book it's done fairly well a few things i would have changed uh, one is um there are some typos in the rule book okay but for the most part you can understand it you can read it you don't have to look back and forth too much on it to try and figure it out um it's laid out well gives you a little explanation of what the characters do and then it explains the veteran and dog rules specifically um because they're a little more complex than the uh, regular uh, characters and then it guides you through the first game and you know the rules but here's what i have a little issue with the first one is back here at the end after they give you an example of turns and all that they give you a bit of a, an overview of each mission i would just put that in the mission log i would leave that out of the rule book um put it somewhere in the beginning of the mission log or something like that and then after that the gear card section here this is one of the big things they explain how to uh, reload the cards that need the gas tokens in this section where they explain a lot of the other stuff for the gear cards in the front um i, I would keep that together instead of breaking this apart and just having a, a card anatomy section here like they have here the rest of it they pretty much explain it going through the rules uh, in the beginning it's just this part here with the gears um the gear cards with these uh, uh gas tokens all right the rules jump around a bit it's a little annoying it's not the end of the world uh like i said most of it is written pretty well they got a glossary on the back which i do like but what i would also put here is a more in-depth explanation of the cards that um each character has all right anything that's a little more complicated i would have just like a basic guide back here saying you know here's how this works a little more in-depth explanation instead of what's just written on the cards because it is the rule books are a little vague on on certain rules and it's expected with a game like this where you have cards being comboed back and forth all right so like i said minor stuff with that in the back this is another one it's the consistency thing 
they do have a view of player aid, which I enjoy a good deal. I think every publisher should do that with a game. And they do have a quick reference page on the back. However, the steps on the uh, player aid and the rule book do not match up. All right. Also, I got some blank space here. Here I would uh, write down the rules for the ally cards because there's a little bit to that. You know, you got dead space, might as well use it. All right, so that is the rule book. Next, we have the campaign book, which is my biggest complaint with the game. All right, so they got nice little pictures and all that to tell you how to set up the, the missions and all that, the objectives and all that is plus. But first mission in the game, which is the first one I played, I skipped the uh, tutorial mission. I usually do. All right, it says set aside the boss monsters, and then it says set aside the scientist scavenge card. That card is not in this game. That is in the uh, Gothic Knights expansion, Gothic Horrors expansion, whatever, standalone expansion, whatever that is. That card is not in this game. It is mentioned a couple times, specifically that card, throughout the missions in the game. It'll confuse the hell out of people. I know it did me. I spent a half hour, 20 minutes, something like that, searching through the decks, looking for this card that does not exist. And then we have different scenarios here that'll show you pictures. Most of these pictures are wrong. They're off by one tile. Or they have, uh, you know, either one tile too many or one tile too less in the examples in the game. All right. That is the negatives. All of this could have been solved with what I call a blind reading of the, bla uh, the the rules. You know, just give somebody the rule book and the game with the final components that has never played the game. Say, read the book, and learn to play the game. You know, they could have caught all that stuff in the rule book and in this mission log with just a simple blind test of the rule book. <coughs> um, so that's, that's that's the biggest thing with me that's the biggest disappointment with this game is just not paying attention to things like i said the art working on it it's minor that it doesn't match up but it, it, you know it's a little annoying the rule book especially it's this like i said the rule book for this game was pretty clear there was a couple mistakes um the status effects was really badly written I'm still not extremely sure I understand it, but I, um, that should be reworded somehow. And then the, uh, the with the with the reloading of the uh, the gas things, they should take out that that word. Uh, what do they use? They use a something specific type in there, mixing up the two of them. Reloading ammo, I think, is what they called it, where they consider this ammo and this ammo um that that confuses people they should just use a separate ser term for each individual one just drop that universe you know that one that combines the two again with the artwork the ammo tokens don't match up to the symbol there's three you know bolt symbols instead of two minor stuff with that but that, a lot of kickstarters these days they do i don't understand that the, the rule book is the first thing that gets your idea across to people. I don't understand why you don't pay more attention to this. All right. If a player was brand new to the hobby or brand new to Rock Manor games, which I am. This is the first Rock Manor game I ever played. But if I were earlier in my gaming, you know, hobby thing, if, you know, in the beginning and I picked this up, I this would frustrate me so much I would never go back to Rock Manor game, especially looking for a card that doesn't exist in the game. Um... So I don't understand why publishers don't pay more attention to this, to, you know, explain their ideas to the new players. All right, so I do like that. We have multiple characters for the character decks, and they work very well, even though they have separate abilities on them. I think the weakest one, in my opinion, is the surgeons. Um, but that's just my opinion. The decks do work very differently from each other, which is cool. I do like that. It's not just like, oh, you have this this character, you take this modifier or this modifier off. They are specific to, you know, the character you're playing. And I do like that asymmetry throughout the character decks. Um, the dogs 
And the veterans are the ones I played least with because, uh, just because they're table hogs. I do like them though. They're sort of like having an ally without actually having an ally. They're, uh, some of these are offenses, some are from defenses, some are for jack of all trades. That's kind of what the veteran is. They could take a lot of attack and give a good bit of attack. Um, whereas like the firefighters just a tank, they, they could take a lot of attack. Yeah. Um, so I do like that. Oh, going back to the rule book, I think that the publisher should put a card list in the rule book because I do believe I am missing one of the ally cards, the uh, the other gunslinger, the, the female gunslinger. Yeah, but minor thing. Uh, going back to the game, I uh, I do like that the tiles are very thematic. You know, uh, if you're in a desert. You know, you're going to increase your hunger by one because you're in the desert. If you're uh, in the forest, if you leave, a monster will be attached to you because, you know, you, you don't know what's following you coming out of a forest. You know, you got to test to go across the river, see if you make it, things like that. I do like that the tiles are thematic. There's other ones in here that are specific to um, individual missions, but generally the, t the tiles are thematic and the ones that go from, you know, one game to another, one mission to another, campaign to another uh they are generalized enough that they work with everything but they are still thematic i do like that this uh hunger thing is fiddly let's go through this it's it's not explained extremely well in there i, I get the, the gist of it after a while but it, it is a little explain a little fiddly what i would do is just get rid of this die thing okay that's the fiddly part of it these can always be knocked and whatnot but on the back we have a track for hunger. I just put the same thing on the front, you know, going one to, to five and then or an arrow saying flip and have a marker there and then just keep going down with the marker. All right. Um, I get it's cool. It is thematic, you know, but this whole thing, when you go to five to flip it over and then as soon as you feed yourself going from six back to five, it wasn't extremely clear in the game. In the rules, but I got it after a while. Um, it's a little fiddly, but it's not huge. It's not a deal breaker. Uh, what else? Uh, the monster decks. I do like them. They are uh, thematic too, and they're they're not the same. You know, sometimes you get these uh, campaign games where the missions are kind of same throughout. Uh, you know, the different campaigns. This one is each deck is different enough that it. It brings new flair to it, and and they're unique, and I do like that. Um, the ball, the boss cards are different, and not only that, just the way that they are used in the game. You know, either set them aside, you shuffle them, and you can stack them. There's different ways that the boss cards and and the monster decks are are utilized that make you know gameplay a little more interesting. You're not doing this same thing over and over and over. It doesn't get tedious. That being said, the missions themselves are are different enough that you're not doing the same thing either. You know, it doesn't get tedious. You could have a mission where you're you're just you know seeking things out, and then you got to bring them back to the van or wherever. There's other missions where you are um, collecting stuff to take to a a spot, and then you know pick up and deliver. Basically, there's other missions where you're going throughout the tiles just exploring them just as like a recon mission so the the missions in between each campaign are different enough that it, it keeps you going you know it's not samey um i do like that it's not over complicated <laughs> all right arkham horror is one of my favorite games it's fiddly and it's over complicated this is in a similar vein to that. The rules are pretty straightforward for the most part. Uh, and it's something that newer players could pick up on. One of the reasons I got this game. I want to bring my brother into it. This is one of the reasons I'm being hard on the game too. is because I, I think if I brought this to him, it would frustrate the hell of him and he would never go back to it again because of the minor stuff in the rule book, especially that first mission thing. If, you know, whenever there's something in the game uh, written in the rule book that's not in the game, and people go to search for that, it'll confuse them or it'll frustrate them, think they got ripped off, blah, blah, blah. And 
basically quality control to me. It's my problem with a lot of Kickstarters. They focus on the pretty plastic as opposed to the actual game, you know, the quality of the actual game. Now, that being said, I know this is the second edition of this game. It's the third version of the game. There's the base the original one. Then there's one called Legendary or Legacy. I think it's Legacy. This is the one Scott recommended to me. I got this version, which is version two, the third edition of it. All right. Or this is the third version, the second edition of the game. Because I figured it'd be the newest rule set, everything be cleaned up. Apparently it wasn't. <laughs> um, and this is what it will be out from here on out. Um, so there was a lot of confusion on board game geek, just in general, trying to see what the differences between the versions were. Um, if I were to, uh, the, uh, publisher, I'd go on board game geek, separate them a little bit, uh, on board game geek. Cause I went to look for the rules specifically on this. It shifted me over to the first version, you know, first edition on it, even though there's not a lot of rule differences, if you're going to look for uh, rules, you want the version that you're looking at, um, you know. Um, also, I, I mentioned in here somewhere where people can find your website or BGG or somewhere to find the rules and the errata. Because I, I know there's going to be a rat on a game like this. There's a lot of card inter interaction, a lot of combos and stuff like that. But people... New to the hobby, will not understand that. Some of them don't even know what Board Game Geek is, depending on how they're shopping. So if you make it easier for them to find out the information on them, you know, it's customer service, stuff like that. Builds up your brand. Alright, but that being said, like I, I was saying, it's simple rule set, which I like. It's not too complicated, not too fiddly, except for that hunger thing, a little bit. Something new players could pick on to up you know could pick up on um this is one i i plan to play with my brother i haven't yet he's more into the outdoor theme you know he's an outdoorsman like i was before all this stuff with my back and neck but um I, th so they do have a standalone expansion called the wilds i forget what it's called um something wild uh frozen wilds i believe I was going to get for that. That has a couple more um, steps into it. So it might have been a little too complicated for him. So I want to try this one first. Um, but I think I like the theming of the other one better. But that being said, I, I do think he can pick this up. And he is not a gamer by any means. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think he could pick this up and he will enjoy it. I do like that. Even though there aren't. A lot of mechanics and all that in the game it, there are a lot of options you can choose there's a lot of things to think about there's you know a lot of choices in the game i do like that there is a lot of ways to you know control the the difficulty of the game and stuff like that you know and it's a well thought out game you know it's, it's pretty well made uh you could tell it was play test it for a, a bit it wasn't just one that's thrown out there although like i said there's some stuff the timing and all that could be explained a little better um but for the most part it's a, it's a very good game unfortunately like i said uh, uh, these minor things with the rule books and stuff like that could make this a good game a great game you know especially for new players to the hobby or somebody who's never you know played this type of game um so, that being said, you know, like I said, it could be a great game. I like it. Pretty plastic thing. It's, you know, every Kickstarter does this. I understand the guy's reasoning. You get more copies sold with the pretty plastic. For me, I don't really care about it. It's what's in the game. But to new players, you know, and some per people who just love pretty plastic, that's going to make the game for them. Not I. So, that rule book and this confusion with what comes with the game and what actually isn't in the game, you know, something you got to watch out for all Kickstarters, not only this. That's why I really don't do Kickstarters. I, I wouldn't have picked this up before for Scott. 
but like I said before, Scott never steered me wrong before, and he hasn't yet. If this is... Oh, I almost forgot about that. Like I said, he's, this was 85 bucks, but I spent 170 because... It's Wasted Wiles. I did get the expansion. And, uh... Like, I, there's a couple more... Uh, minor rules to it. There's another board and in, in a few cards. It's it's not a whole lot more complicated. And then there's a third standalone exp expansion called Gothic Horrors or Gath Gothic Knights. I can't remember. I didn't pick that one up. I may or may not, but they're not getting more money out of me this month. <laughs> um, so, um, and then there, I believe there are a couple smaller expansions that you could add into these that aren't standalone but they will work throughout the three games which do work together if you combine them there's certain rules and stuff you gotta read for that and there is a, a, a mission log specifically that you could go back and add all the other stuff into it and i think that's part of the reason for this mission log being so screwed up with the uh the uh scientist scavenger card because again they just look over to work you know they were trying to smash all this together and instead of separating the mission logs they used all one and you know part of it isn't in this version of the mission this version of the game the, the base game it's in the other uh got the cards game so Again, other than the minor things, I think it's a good game. If you would like to pick it up, you can find it on the internet. Maybe on your your local game store. I'm not sure. This was a Kickstarter, like I said. Um, you can find more information on it at Board Game Geek or at Rock Miner Games. Uh, so, that's it. Get gaming. Have fun. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Keep you out.